What up? Where am I from? Why? Because of the colors of my hat. What's yellow and black? Nah, I don't bang. I can't wear my hat like this. Damn, they deep. That's a whole lot of dudes, man. Uh, my bad, bro. I can't wear it like that. What's wrong now? I can't turn it that way. I'm good now. I'm tripping. Am I? I can't wear these colors. The hell? Oh, y'all think I'm from somewhere else and I'm lying about everything. I just like the hat. I just like the color. That'll get me killed around here. My cousin ain't tell me nothing about this shit. Where the hell am I at? What? Oh, shit. Hell no. I'm out. I'm out. I'm... <sighs> Dude's ready to kill me over my hat, man. <sighs> Welcome to Illinois, I guess. <sighs> Hurry, get the hell in the house. I'm gonna cuss my cousin's ass out, man. He ain't tell me. You can't wear certain colors, turn your hat a certain way, the dudes will kill you out here, man. <sighs> Where am I at? <laughs> you got to be the stupidest. Motherfucker. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jake Williams, let's live life. And we're back. Gang, gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang. Gang, gang, gang. Gangs. You think of gangs, what do you think of? You think of California. Bloods, Crips, Lag Kings, GDs, Vice Lords, BGDs. And then a whole spinoff of other gangs. You think of Chicago, Illinois. These are the things that initially come to your head, to your mind, to your brain when you think about gangs. What a lot of y'all don't realize is there are gangs in every single state in America. Think not. I don't care where you from. There's gangs there. Somebody is from a set out in Cali and for whatever reason they move. Maybe family's sick. Maybe they're young. Live with their people and their people decide to move across the United States. So now you got an active gang member that's in Cali that just moved to New York. Just moved to Seattle, Washington, Florida, Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Philadelphia, Boston, you name it. He gets there, taps in with the big homies, the people back home. He ain't going to stop banging. Nah, he's going to turn up. We'll try to get his rank up, holler at his people, hey. I want to set up shop here. Next thing you know, your quiet little neighborhood goes from being a quiet little neighborhood to being gang infested, to being just like that neighborhood he was from back home. You get into the prison systems, flooded with gangs. If you're not used to dealing with gangs, man, <laughs> you got a whole lot coming your way. You better get prepared real fast. Today we're going to get into the gangs, them disciplining their own. What happens when one of theirs step out of line? You think you're going to run up and do something to one of them? You think you're going to start beating up on a gang member and he's got all his homeboys behind him? Mm -hmm. No, sir. You better not. You better keep your hands to yourself. You can go from fighting one to fighting 50. They'll handle him. And if you're wrong in any way, well, huh. They're all going to handle you. That's what we own now. Disciplined by your own gang while locked up. Without further ado, you know I'd have seen it. You know I'd have lived it. So, let's relive. Back in the 90s, huh, on the run. Created a whole bunch of problems, a whole bunch of warrants in Virginia, and they are looking for me. In the 90s, I bounced around. You might catch me in Philly. You might catch me in Illinois. You might catch me in North Carolina. I'm all over. I had seen gangs in Virginia, but they weren't real. I remember they had these Southside Bloods out here, and the majority of them were white dudes. I would say 99.9% .9 of this gang was white dudes. 
I didn't know at the time that this was fraudulent. I had an idea looking back on it. It was 100% cap. It was all made up. I hadn't seen active gangs in the streets like that in Virginia. I would see active gangs, real gangs, once I hit the penitentiary. Philly prisons, well, let me say Philly jails, didn't see the gangs like that. Make my way to prison in Virginia. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. It's gangland. I've seen it in the jails a whole lot. But I kind of had the same thoughts that I did. I told you about that street gang I've seen here in VA, which now that I know years later and after going to prison, it was fake. They were not, they were not real bloods. They didn't have a single homer they could tap in with that could validate them. They just decided one day, hey, we're Southside Bloods. And that's what they became. But if somebody official had showed up here from another state and, and G-checked them and started checking their paperwork, they realized real quick, these dudes are just claiming they made their own shit up. You get to prison and coming out of the jails, I seen it, I get to prison and I realized real quick, these dudes ain't play pimping. This shit ain't fake. This shit's official. Everywhere you look, you would see dudes mobbed up, squatted up. And I'm not talking about one or two, sometimes you might see one or two gang members walking by themselves, kicking it, smoking on something while they walk on the track on the yard. But then they would call meetings, something would be going on, or they'd have their weekly meeting, and quickly, it could escalate. It could be 50, 100, 200 gang members standing in a big group as a guy in the middle talks and everybody else just listens. First time I seen somebody get ran down on by their own, I didn't really understand. That's your gang. Your homeboys. Dudes you rock with every day. And they are beating the dog shit out of you over there. There's three of them on dude. Whooping his ass. It'll be but a couple days and I've seen the same thing transpire with another dude. And another dude. And over the years, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that happen. I'd see him go in the cell. For a set amount of time, they put three on one. I've seen it ran a lot of different ways. Depending on who their big homie is, who's in power, that's going to determine how that gang is ran. It's going to determine how violent that gang is. It's going to determine a lot of different things. I've seen the same gang be ran by different people, and they go from being peaceful to real violent. From them not causing no trouble to dudes getting robbed and extorted. Then I've also seen dudes that were real big on the the politics, the discipline when it came to the gangs and they wanted it to be peaceful for the most part we here if we gotta do something but we're not trying to do nothing we're trying to get money there's a lot of money in prison to be made if y'all running around causing confusion all day starting fights all day tit for tat going back and forth with everybody else well, how we gonna make money if we in the hole? how we gonna make money if we in the investigation? how we gonna make money if the whole prison is locked down cause y'all running around doing dumb shit so they would take them dudes that were doing that dumb shit and they whooped their asses. We get a crip dude in one time that's high ranking. And he changes everything up. And I don't know to this day if what he was doing was right or wrong because I've seen it done so many different ways. But what he would do with all the crip dudes is when they went to commissary on store day, you would bring all your commissary to his cell. He would take it all. And for his homeboys that didn't have any commissary were doing worse than everybody, he would divvy it up. Now, he would break you off, give you back some of your stuff, but they're going to put it all in a pile and make sure that every single person in that gang has got something to eat. Then he's going to take all that money and put it together and make sure that if they need to make a move, they need to buy something or put some money here, put some money there, they've got it. So you just came back with $150 in commissary, and after leaving his cell, you got $40, $50 worth of commissary. But if you need something... You just go holler at this dude. This would take place week after week after week. You see these dudes come back with the commissary bags over their shoulders, big heavy ass bags full of sodas, potato chips, bags of coffee, zoom zooms, wham whams, all your favorite little delights, all your little teeth rotten candies. And they would make his way, they'd make their way right over to dude's cell. Dude's cell was flooded with commissary. Say a cell phone hits the yard and they need to get a hold of it. Some drugs at the yard and they need to get a hold of it. And the investigators are watching the money coming in and going out. So you got to be careful. 
You can't get your people to make a move for you right now. Look, I got you, but instead of doing money, I'm just going to give you double in commissary. The commissary served a lot of purposes. We got all these dudes reporting this dude, and you got a younger crip dude that does the same as everybody else, but he gets caught one day doing something that's a, it's a no-no. He's at the commissary window, and he's got a cellmate. There's two commissary windows where somebody works back there, and it's like bars. They, there's a slot at the bottom, and they pass your commissary under the bottom. They have a slip. They read it off, and as they hand you the items, they check it off on the slip. Two bags of coffee. Here you go. Two bags of coffee. Check. 24 chicken soups. Check. 24 ginger rails. Damn, you thirsty as a bitch. Check. 24 Dr. Peppers. Ain't got no teeth left. Check. They pass it out the window to you. As they're passing through this commissary, another one of the crypt dudes peeps something he did. His cellmate standing at the window beside him. He takes the hand of his coffee. Hey, yo. He drops him in his, in his cellmate's bag. A couple more items that he wanted to keep for himself that he didn't want to divvy up. He drops in his cellmate's bag. They get back, go to the big homie cell, divvy everything up. Short time later, I see a bunch of the dudes over at his cell talking to him. Be the big dude that they all answer to. So the one crypt dude comes back, goes to his dude and tells him, hey, I seen the homeboy dropping items in his cellmate's commissary bag. He ain't respecting the laws. He ain't coming back and breaking bread like everybody else. He's giving his cellmate stuff to hold and the cellmate's taking it back to the cell and he's coming over here with whatever he wants to come with, but he's keeping stuff for himself. They go to his cell, holler at him about it. The big dude goes to holler at him. He denies it. Nah, 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 nah. I owed my cellmate them two bags of coffee. You know, we don't owe nobody in here. We a gang. How we look owing other people? We make other people owe us. What you mean you owe him? Nah, nah, I ain't owe him. He'd ask me to grab him something, so I grabbed it for him. I'm looking out for him. Nah, you look out for us. You don't do that again, you hear me? They gave him a warning. That was your warning. You know that the next time, you're lucky to get that warning. Next time, it's going to be an ass whooping. While it goes by a couple weeks, he does it again. People put their nose where it don't belong. People always butt in somebody else's business. Dudes overheard him and what they were saying to him about the commissary. Even me not being a gang member, I knew the rules. He knew the rules. Everybody knows the rules when it comes to the gangs. You, you can't hide them. They're there. They're in place. People get beat up behind this shit. He does it again. And it would be somebody that wasn't even gang affiliated. I guess wanted to get some cool points. Maybe some protection. Get on this dude's good side and go and say, Hey, I know y'all hollered at dude about the putting commissary in dude's bag. And he said he won't do it again. But look, man, I ain't trying to start nothing. Leave me out of it. Don't tell him I said nothing, but I seen him do it again, man. He did it earlier. Yeah, man, he passed some shit off to his cellmate. They go over and holler at him. Now, there was usually they would do it in the cell to keep it out of sight of everybody else. They go out on the yard that day and I look down at the yard. We have what's called Cracker Beach up Greensville. Cracker Beach is the volleyball area. There's a bunch of sand and there's a volleyball net. And they call it Cracker Beach because... It's where all the white dudes would hang out. You'd have white dudes out there laying out, suntanning, crazy shit. Got their shorts rolled all the way up, whole thighs out. When they go down to Cracker Beach, all the gang members are mobbed up. Dudes stay from down there because you know shit's about to go down. Whole squad of these dudes down there. Better part of 25, 30 of them at, on this part of the yard. Down there talking. And the big dude's in the center laying down the law. He done warned dude. He done told dude. We're just walking laps. I'm being nosy. It's my everyday routine. We don't got the weight power this, this wreck period. So ain't a whole lot to do. It's hot as hell outside. So you ain't playing no real sports out there. Ain't no baseball, no softballs, no softball bats. Ain't no basketballs being passed out. People are dying from heat strokes. They're not passing these things out. So there ain't shit to do but walk this dusty ass track in the heat. We make our first lap around and everything's calm, kosher, and cool. As I'm coming back around, coming around for the second lap, I see that the circle has tightened up. These dudes were spread out. This is kind of tightened up. And I see dudes jump on this dude. With them busting dudes ass, it wasn't what I was used to seeing. I was used to seeing it usually be like three guys that would fight one, one on three. You rumble, fight back. You know what I mean? They're gonna try to do everything they can to, to kick your ass. I've seen that one dude come out on top sometimes and get the stroking on three of these dudes, for real. True fact, 
But in this situation, it wasn't three dudes, man. I don't know how many dudes it was, but it was a lot of dudes. They usually respected this. When they would drop, they would line them back up. Get him up. Get him off the ground. They'd stand him up and then, doom, 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 doom. Everybody go back at him. Not this dude. He's on the ground. And he's dropped. And dudes are kicking him. Kicking him in his face. Punching him in the sides of his head. I'd seen violations where they weren't hitting him in the face. They were just body shotting him, hitting him, catching him all in the body. And they wouldn't kick if you were down. This dude is on the ground and dudes are kicking him in his face, kicking him in his ribs, punching him in the back of his head. He had gotten up or tried. Let me rephrase that. He had tried to get up on several occasions. But the moment that he would make a little leeway with getting up, other dudes that weren't originally even jumping him would run up and start pinging him up, keeping him down. We made our way from where this started all the way back around, which is almost a mile to tell you how long this shit took place for. We walk by it as, it as it pops off and the first dude hits him and we look over and they're just beating the dog shit at him. We make our way all the way around the track behind the softball bleachers, past the little tables where people do sit, make our way back down the Cracker Beach and they're just finishing up. This dude is on the ground. He's bleeding everywhere and now the big dude is telling dudes the same what we want to do well, we got to show y'all y'all ain't gonna do what y'all want to do there are laws in place for a reason if i let y'all do whatever y'all want to do things will get chaotic this ain't have to happen dude finally makes his way up stands up they dust him off other dudes are tending to his wounds and stuff taking a towel when we brought out and was Wiping the blood off his face, cleaning his face up, getting the dust and the rocks off the side of his head. I seen dude later that evening. He was smashed. Two black eyes. Eyes damn near swole shut. Squinting out of one eye that's barely open. Blood dried up in his nostril where his nose was broken, continued to bleed. Lips split up, chin split up. Scratches, scuff marks, kick marks, punch marks, knots, whelps. Everything that comes with a decent ass whooping. He's right back to walking around with these dudes, kicking it with him. Now, I understand, I understand why it happened, and I come to understand more as the years progressed, and I spent more time in prison, and years went by, and years went by. I understood. But I just couldn't picture my homeboys, the ones that say they love me, the ones that I say I love, the ones that will go to war behind me, being the ones that hurt me behind something that I considered that situation to be petty. Who is this dude to tell all these dudes, you gotta bring your food over here? This big dude ain't even really going to commissary like that. He's letting his money just stack up on his books and not spending it because he's got the rank to where he can eat up all their food. Dude continued to gang bang after that. And I've seen a whole lot of more situations just like the one we just talked about. That wouldn't be the worst of it. Let me get into another story real quick. I'm so tired of being tired. It is 5 o'clock in the evening. I'm just getting back to the job again. We're doing tile. Finishing up another job. While I'm trying to YouTube. Had to go get more mortar. Everybody else is going home. So being the boss, I got to jump in. And get this tile wrapped up. Let's get into this next story. Set hopping. For y'all to know, know what set hopping is, that's when you were a part of one gang, now you're part of another gang. You've jumped from one gang to the next. Highly frowned upon. A good way to get your ass kicked, to get yourself seriously hurt, and depending on how you transitioned over and which gang you left and which gang you joined and everything that transpired and you have to leave that one and join this one, Depending on all of them factors, that's going to play a major part in how bad the ass whooping you're going to get is going to be. Or if it's going to be an ass whooping or is it going to go way past I have that. a cellmate and he is an act of blood. He is still an act of blood. I don't know. If, no, let me rephrase that. He was real active in prison. He's out of prison now. And I ran into him probably about a year and a half ago over on the north side of Richmond working over there. Bumped in each other the red light. We pulled over, talk, exchanged numbers. Doing pretty good for himself in life. Salute. 
So I'm going to leave his name out of it because I don't know if he wants that attached to him out here in society. I don't know if he bangs in the streets. But I've got a cellmate at this point in time that is real active, doing the whole nine tray thing. You know, he's a big nine tray gangster in prison. Got a whole lot of homeboys. There was a lot of nine trays, a lot of brim gang, bounty hunters, just different sets of bloods. He would always have different homeboys over at the cell, kicking it, talking about this and that. I'm cool with him, cool with the dudes he kicks it with. Now, if you're not cool, nine times out of ten when they come to the cell, they're going to be like, hey, man, step out, let me holler at your cellmate. We got some business to talk. And they'd ask you to roll out. I never had that issue. I'd be sitting there watching TV, and they'd walk up. What up, Jay? And then they what up to my cellmate? And they'd stand there in politics, whatever they had going on. You can't help but hear them unless I got my earphones in and I'm watching TV. A lot of times I'd just be sitting there drawing a tattoo padding up or getting, you know, stretching needles, sharpening needles to tattoo with, whatever I got going on, they would come in politic with him. We get a new dude in the pub, which was very common. We get new people monthly. Sometimes we get a lot of people. Sometimes it might be one or two. But we get a new dude in the pod, and immediately he's clicked up with my cellmate, clicked up with these other bloods. This would go on for a while now. I didn't got to know dude pretty good. He's always at the cell talking with my cellmate. Attends all the meetings they have on the yard. Several different times I'd seen them violate somebody and he'd be quick to jump in and boom, 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 put hands on somebody. He walks in the pod right out the gate. He's throwing up gang signs, throwing up gang calls. He comes to me one day and tells me he needs a tattoo. And I've had this happen a bunch of different times where dudes want a tattoo, but they want me to keep the tattoo to myself. Like, don't tell nobody what I'm getting or what I want or... Just let's keep this between me and you because it can cause problems. Pretty much the MO of what happened when dude came to me. He said, look, man, I got an issue, and I'm wondering if you can help me with the issue. I said, well, what's your issue? He's like, I need to change a tattoo I have on my back. I said, all right. Keep it between us, what I'm about to tell you. I said, all right. And I did. I said, what you got? He's like, I got a star on my back that... I need to either try to figure out a way to cover up or to turn into a five-point star. I said, let me see. Takes his shirt off. And on his back, he's got this big-ass six-point star, which is a Crip star. Now, he's trying to figure out a way to turn it into a five-point star, which is like a regular star you would see, like a star in the sky, a star on top of a Christmas tree. And I'm looking at it, and there's hard lines right through the middle. It's like two triangles. You know, one flipped upside down, then another one creating a star. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, it's pretty dark. It's been plucked in his skin, so his skin is whelped up from where it was put on him. And I, I get to looking at it, and I'm just glancing and trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. And I'm like, yeah, I can change it. I'm like, what I could do is just put a bigger star over top of that star. I can't do anything with what's there, but put a big-ass star on your back. and put. I can either... Shaded in black, or I can put different things in it, faces inside the star, seen inside the star, and then I'll negative shade around it. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. What you gonna charge me? So I tell him, and I tell him before I even get started on this, you're gonna have to bring some of the money just for me to start drawing. You don't know how many times I've drawn tattoo patterns, then when it comes time to get it, somebody don't want it, and either somebody else ends up getting it, and then this person gets mad. I mean, I was gonna come back, that was my pattern. Or the pattern just goes in a book full of other patterns, and just lays there. So he brings me the money. My cellmate asked me, what's up with, uh, with blood, man? Like, what are you talking about? I say ain't shit. I kept it to myself. I didn't tell him what it was. I knew what was going to happen when these boys find out that, A, I'm covering up a big-ass crip star on this dude's back. B, he's now blood. I just tell him he wants me to do some stuff on his back. And dude tells me, like, look, we got to hurry up and get that big star on there and start shading and try to get this other star gone. Because if dudes see it, they're going to get at me. I said, yeah, I got you. So I just, I shoot my celly some bullshit. And I didn't lie to him. I just didn't tell him what I was covering up. I didn't tell him it was a cover up. He waits until they call Night Rec one night. And when they call Night Rec, most of the gang members go outside. There might be in the summertime when they call night wreck. Night wreck is from 6 to 8 p.m. Sometimes it go from like account was running late, 6.15, 6.30, and then it go up to like 8.30. And we lock down at 9 for count. Everybody goes out to night wreck 
and it's summertime, beautiful outside, summer breeze on the yard, sun setting, dudes going out there just to kick it and chill, do that routine. He waits till night that all these dudes are going out. Asked me, hey, I think it was like, a, it was a weekday. Can I come over this day and we start my back? Asked me in advance. I said, yeah, I got you, I got you. He comes to the cell. He's already paid me for some of the pattern. Brings the rest of the money with him. Sits down. And usually dudes, when they come in, I would sit with my back facing the door. There's two stools mounted on the ground. And they would sit on the stool in front of me. And if I'm working on your back, you lean over and my back's facing the door and your back's facing the door and you're facing the wall. Well, he wanted to face the door and have my back to the wall and his back to the wall. I guess so if anybody walked by, they couldn't see his back on what I was doing, right? So we're in there talking. And he starts giving me the rundown of what had happened. He said, look, when I got, when I first, he said, this is my second prison bid. And on my first prison bid, I was crip. He said, I became crip in the jail. I the come jail in. I was in, the pod I was in. When I came in, I was younger. Crip dudes was deep. He said, so I got down. It was one of those things where if you're going to be in a gang, you're going to join the gang at the time that's got the most numbers. He's like, well, this gang, you know, they had the most numbers. So I got down with him. And he didn't do a lot of time on his first bid. I think it was like a three, four-year bid, if I remember right. And then he finishes up his sentence. He goes home. Now he's an active crip. Catches him a fresh 10 years, not long after he gets out within the first year. Comes back to the jail. Now, he hasn't been in this jail for like four years since he first initially got locked up the last time he's been in prison all the rest of these years he gets to the jail now all the crypt dudes he kicked away if none of them are there no more they're all off in prison or them went home the jail is turned over you're not going to come back to jail four years later and kick it with the same people they're all gone new guys have got arrested he said when he comes into jail this time them bloods are deep he said dudes were he said i guess Maybe he was lying, trying to cover his own ass. He said, dudes were coming in that were crip and not letting it be known they were crip. He was like, the last thing you wanted to do, he's like, we were beefing real hard at the time, was coming in. He's like, there was only a small number of crips at this point. And usually, the crips and bloods usually don't beef like that in jail. But when you got a small group of dudes and then a large group of dudes, you're going to have problems. He said, so when I get to the, to the jail, I don't know none of these dudes. Don't none of these dudes know me. And they're at some shit where it's like they're extorting dudes, beating dudes up. So I, I got down with them. I said, so let me get this right. You started your first bit off and in jail you became a crip. Got this big ass star plucked on your back. For y'all don't know, plucking means it's when you just take a sharp needle and you wrap some thread around it, you dip it in ink and you just pluck, 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 stab the skin with it and the ink stays. I was like, so you went to jail the first time, became crip, got sent off to prison. Came home as a crip, returned to jail, and when you returned to jail, the bloods were running the jail. So pretty much to keep from getting ran down on by these dudes, you join with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, so far, so, you know, I said, you ain't afraid you're going to, like, run into dudes in here that used to be your crip homeboys? No, I was at a whole nother prison. Like, I ain't never banged on this prison. But the problem is dudes from other prisons get shipped all the time. So just because you're not at the same prison don't mean that there's not a very strong possibility dudes from that prison don't end up at this prison i'm in the middle of doing his back and i got this big ass star that i've already outlined then i put like different skull faces and ghost faces and little i'm just doing all the outline trying to make this tattoo disappear and everybody starts coming in from wreck and he keeps taking breaks oh that shit's hurting hold on hold on chill chill he want to take like five ten minute breaks smoke two three cigarettes and then jump back into it i'm like Man, we need to hurry up and get this shit done for dudes come in. Everybody comes in from night wreck. So now when they come from night wreck, dudes are rushing to get to the shower. He's got to come back in after count. I'm not finished with it. I told him this tattoo is going to take at least two sessions. One line in session. I'll get started on some shading to try to make the old tattoo disappear. But I'm not going to be able to finish it all in one sitting. Unless you want to wait till after count and come back in. He's like, yeah, I'll come back in. I'll come back in. He's under the impression that I've got enough of it done that you can't see what's there. And for the most part, you can't, but you can see what's new and you can see what's old. My celly comes in, dude's done put his shirt on. And I told him, after count, I'm going to finish your homeboy's back up, you know, as much as I can. And if I have to, then we'll go another day. But he's going to come back in after count. It's common respect to let him know 
in case he was planning on going to sleep or watching a TV show, that I need this area right here to tattoo after count. We do count and everything. They clear count. Dude comes over and he's standing there boy, that's bullshit. And I can tell he's kind of stalling, hoping that my cellmate will leave out the cell. My cellmate's posted up. My cellmate tells me, that's cool. I'm just going to kick back and relax. He hops on the top bunk, turns his TV on, and is just laid back watching TV. Dude comes in at first. He's hesitant. He sits down. And I can tell the whole vibe of how we were kicking it earlier and how he's acting now is way different. I'm tattooing on his back, and my cellmate is glancing down. He's asking me a little thing. What's that going to be? And I'm telling him, what you doing right there? I'm adding some little cities, some little buildings in the bottom of the star. That's what's up. That shit's tough. That shit's gangster. He's just kind of complimenting the work. And he gets to look, and he's like, yo, what did you cover up? I don't say nothing. I'm not trying to get in the middle of no gang shit, get brought in the middle of nothing. And dude's like, oh, it ain't nothing. That's an old tattoo I had from way back in the day. He's like, what is it? He's like, it was some bullshit. He's like, no, what is it, man? He already peeped what it is. He's looking at the old tattoo, and you can see it. I heard some shit from when I was young. I used to kick it with some dudes. Like, hey, this shit ain't nothing. Now, that's a big-ass six-point star on your back, blood. Nah, 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 nah. I was young, man. The shit wasn't even validated. Somebody hops down off the top bunk. Goes ahead and sits down on my bunk, and I look over, and he's lacing his boots up. Whenever you see somebody lacing their boots up, it's go time. He leaves out the cell, goes down to where his big homie is, hollers at him. They come back to the cell. I'm sitting there, and when my cellie returns, he's got a bunch of dudes with him. AJ slide out the way real quick. So I'm like, what's up? Looks at me, and I'm like, ah, oh, man, they going to beat the fuck out this dude. So I go ahead, take the tattoo gloves off. I keep a magnet on the side of my tattoo gun so I can stick it underneath the counter in case the police come. The bottle of ink's got a magnet. I can stick it underneath the counter. I said, give me, give me a second to clean my stuff up. Nah, we need to get up in there. I said, all right, man. So I stick my stuff up. I step outside the cell door, and I'm more or less just waiting outside the cell where they do what they do. They come in. Hey, let me see your back. Hey, nah, man, I can, I can explain. I can explain. Let, let me see your back, man. Turn around. Nah, it ain't even like that. Let me see. do 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 Dude's marbling, smashing him all the way out. I look down the tier. Here comes more dudes. They, excuse me, Jake, run up in there. Trash dude. They beat this dude, beat this dude, kick this dude, kick his head all upside the wall, stomping his face, punching his face. He done set hopped. He done hopped from being a crip to being a blood. They fucked that dude up in that cell. Then they slowly, everybody started to roll out. One dude goes to roll out, walks back in. Kicks him in his face again. They all leave. Now it's me, him laying on the ground, and my cellmate. He talking to my cellmate. It ain't even like that, bro. This shit fucked up. My cellmate, shut up. Fun! Hits him in his face. Drops him back down to his knees. Grabs him by his shirt and just starts wailing on him. Now it's just him and him. Dude ain't got no fight. Even if he could have beat my cellmate after that ass whooping he just took, he probably couldn't beat your average third grader. He goes to get up. My celly kicks him in his ass. He falls over on the floor, makes his way up, leans up on the side of the wall. He's bleeding on the wall. My celly tells him to help out of my cell, right? This dude goes in that night, locks in for count, and when we get up in the morning, his cellmate comes down to our cell and tells him, hey, old boy checked in in the middle of the night. Checked in, and she went to the police, told him you fear for your life. They come through all throughout the night just shining flashlights in cells looking around. I guess dude's all mangled, goes to the door, tells him, I fear for my life, get me up out of here. Here's the problem. It's already happened. Word is going to get to the other side of the compound, so you're not safe, know where you go. Well, not only has this happened, but now all the Crip dudes have found out that the blood dude used to be Crip. Now, they done asked him all the way out. He's no longer blood. They're not messing with him. They can't stand behind somebody just jumps from one gang to another gang. So now it's open season with these Crip dudes that want to get at him. After these blood dudes have done split him all up, he definitely needs stitches. This shit's going to take a while to heal. He decides if I go to the hole, I'm safe. You're not safe. Here in Virginia, you're not safe if you go to the hole, especially of Greensville. Greensville used to have, when you go to the hole, you get an hour wreck each day in the hole, and they would take everybody from the hole, bring them out, and put them in this massive cage together, unhandcuffed. Since then, while I was there, they broke it down into individual dog cages. But at this point in time, it was just one big open cage. So if you and a dude had an issue and y'all got to rumbling or whatever, y'all got sent to the hole, the following morning at 8 o'clock, they're going to call 
an hour wreck, you go out and pace around in this cage, you and the dude you just got to beefing with are outside in this cage, in the hole, fighting again the moment the guard leaves. So everything that transpired in the cell with this dude trying to get this tattoo covered up, him being a crib, everybody in the pod heard what was going on, knew what was going on in the cell, had caught wind of why they beat him up. Now the crib dudes have all got wind of it. You got bloods in the hole. Crips in the Go hole. Go talk to your homeboys while they were in the hole once they came out for wreck. Dude gives it a couple days. He's in the hole. Nobody can get to him because he ain't went to wreck yet. Must be a glutton for punishment. Besides, one morning, he's going to go out to wreck. He's in there in the cage with all these dudes. And the blood dudes are yelling at him, false flagging, bitch. Just yelling shit. Crip dudes are walking the yard. They walk over inside the blood dudes. Holler at the Crips that stand inside the cage and tell them, Homeboy used to be Crip, man. Yeah, he hopped set, claiming that blood now. Stood on the yard, watched all these dudes inside that cage. I think it was maybe four or five dudes that was in the cage at the time. Commenced to whooping his ass. Beat him all up, busted his stitches open, left him laying there bleeding. Their hour wreck is up. The guard comes out to start taking guys back inside the hole. And here old boy is, laying on the ground. Beat up, smashed all the way out. Bleeding all over the place for a second time. That's why I told you I ain't never joined no gangs. I got enough problems of my own. There you have it. Violated by your own gang. What happens when you, you, you jump from one set to the next? Do this, do that. You got beat up. Legitly got stomped out like that over his commissary for the money his people were sending him. His mom and daddy, his grandma take care of him because he ain't break bread the way they felt he should break bread. He smashed him all the way up. And the other dude was part of one gang, joined another gang, and ended up getting beat up by both gangs. Now, no offense to no gang members. You know, that's just, it is what it is. I don't make the stories. I don't create the stories. I just retell them. That's all I do. I'm just a, I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm cool with everybody. But I gotta get back to work. It is nighttime, it's dark, everybody's gone, and I got a whole ass load of tired to install. So there's that. But anyways, these jails, institutions, prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazy world inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing, I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams, let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do. Salute. I hate working, man. Why I always got to work? This shit is in the way.